Live from Red Feather Studios, it's the most controversial film podcast on the air. I don't give a flick. All right. Um, d- 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 Meg, can I get a uh, sound check from you? Can I get you to sing something for me? You know, just to make sure I got the levels right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, <clears throat> uh, yes. Let's see. How about got nothing to give you but a prayer. God's gonna see you through. To part with you is more than I can bear. Somebody's gonna love you. Uh, a confession. I, I really didn't need that for the audio check. I just like to hear you sing. <laughs> Thanks, Gary. Oh, I had a feeling. Yeah. That's so sweet. Yeah. yeah Anybody no know what musical that was from? Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe that was Gary's In a Cara de Vida by Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Neil. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> what was it from, Mick? The color purple. Oh, okay. It's stuck in you my remember, head today. Do you remember when you did that? Um, uh, what was that song uh, that you did in chorus line uh, your senior or not? You did yes, in Cabaret the, your senior year. What was oh, that? I don't know. It, my, oh, got it. it was from a chorus I'm line. certain that I love him. Oh, yes, Aida. Aida, right? yes, yeah, yeah. Aida. Yeah, that's right. Oh, that was so good. To <laughs> him now with chicken bread. <laughs> what? Uh, Brian Eaglehoff thought that it was like, fill me now with chicken bread instead of chilling bread. Yes. Uh, you have a good memory. You know, I remember things that are important to me. I guess uh, I guess I'm the only one here, and I wasn't even really involved in that, so okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess you weren't, uh, you didn't get in a cabaret till June. I didn't get mm-hmm. shit, Johnny. I didn't get yeah. nothing. Yeah, that was pretty funny. As long um, as you seem more like me, girl, you'll be all right. Okay. I was just thinking that today, by the way. I was just I was just picturing Bagley in my head standing in front of you being like, Gary, why can't you sing more like Neil? Hey, everybody, welcome to another episode of I Don't Give a Flick. I'm your host, Johnny Blackburn, and alongside me this week, as they are, unfortunately, every week, are my co-hosts, Gary Elmore and Neil Riley. And we are coming to you live from beautiful, sunny Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, we flew everybody in because we have that kind of budget. Um, Neil, I think I'm lying, but you didn't cut me off, so I'm just going to keep going with it. Uh, no, this week we are uh, very pleased to uh, pop two new people's cherries for entering uh, our podcast with us. We've got uh, we've got Meg Steiner and Kat Lideline. <laughs> Guys, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so we are jumping into movie musicals, uh, not only the greatest movie musicals to have ever been created, but also some of the worst and some of the worst performances and a lot of other tantalizing potential debates that could pop up. Uh, so we will jump right in. Uh, I want to go ahead and give uh, Kat and Meg a chance to kind of give our listeners a little background to them, how you guys got started in the industry, um, you know, what you're doing now, um, things like that. So Kat, let's start with you. Um, kind of give us a little background on you. Oh, of course. Um, I'm Kat. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I'm actually John's cousin. She I am a very, uh, very talented family. Uh, I'm an actor in New York. I kind of started down the classical, the classical route. But, um, you know, we've always been a singing family and, and, uh, I think my sophomore year of college, I started doing musicals and decided I wanted to move to New York and then randomly booked a tour of China and was in China for a year doing the one starry night tour. And then, you know, came back to like a super sunny global pandemic, you know, and uh, (laughs) I just finished doing uh, (laughs) South Pacific at uh, Long Island Broadway, which is a new theater that just made out in Nassau County and the first equity theater out in that county. So really proud of them. And it was great to like get to perform again. Then just, you know, singing every day, doing the singing thing. That's right. That's right. That's awesome, man. So what what got you started doing? Because originally you started basically with with opera, right? I mean, essentially, that's where you started at in high school. So what what got you interested in that? 
the opera. Mm-hmm. So I always really liked singing. I remember uh, I would come home from school and I would like turn on the Wicked soundtrack and we'd like yeah. sing along to that. And then at some point, my parents were like, seems like Kat's really interested in singing. We're going to find her a teacher in the area. So I think they like passed around and I worked with this woman in my hometown and uh, she was really interested in, in opera. She used to be an opera singer. And so um, mm-hmm. I think like through my training, she kind of exposed me to more opera. And then I really like, fell in love with that world and in love with Mozart and like wanting to do pants roles, like women playing men seemed really interesting to me when I was like 15. Um, yeah, and then, you know, the older I got, I felt like this, melodramatic as opera can get I felt like there was more serious work being done in in musical theater and and I I really wanted to be a part of that as much as there is like humor and gaiety and all of the things that also come with musical theater but I felt like opportunity to tell stories in English was something I really wanted to be doing and that's kind of how I switched over yeah, that's that's fantastic. Now, how is it how's it been? Because when I was so for, for those of you listening that have been keeping up with us for the last couple of months, you guys remember when I did my lap around the country um, starting this summer and I stayed with Kat in New York for about a week. I mean, she kind of showed me around and um, it was awesome. We had a lot of fun. But when I was there, what really sucked was all of Broadway was shut down. Mostly everything else was open, but all live shows were completely shut down. And so did they just recently open back up or cause I mean, you said you were in uh, South Pacific, so I would assume. Yes. So yeah, Broadway is reopened and they're really doing a valiant effort to keep it open. Everybody's testing every day. And um, it's cool because, you know, obviously with Omicron, like more people are getting sick. Um, so like some of the longer running shows are starting to pull from their alumni. And so like mm-hmm. Wicked has pulled some people that haven't been in the show for like seven years and now they're going back oh. on. And so like, you can kind of get like your, your like favorite MVP picks and like go see mm. somebody who like you really wanted to go see in Wicked or Phantom, you know, some of these longer running shows and things like that. Yeah. And, people from the national tours are going back into the Broadway and off Broadway shows. So it's kind of an interesting like mix now. And I'm, I'm happy the producers are like using to spend the money on, on the talent to like keep the shows open and like keep New mm-hmm. York theater scene running. So it's an, it's a cool time. It's a challenging time, but you know, I'm glad that people are really making an effort to keep it open. Yeah, absolutely. And man, what I wouldn't give, cause actually, uh, Actually, all actually, the four of us here, Meg, Neil, Gary, and myself, we did a uh, we did a New York trip uh, when we were in high school, and we actually got to see Wicked at the Gershwin Theater, and that was I think it was the year after they opened, and Kristen Ch- Kristen Chenoweth and Adina Menzel were not part of the cast when we got to see it, so we were all pretty disappointed about that. But man, it was right. still it was the it was my favorite show that we got to see. What's up? That was, that was seventeen years ago. Yeah, I mean, Adina, yeah. Adina and Just to let you know. are they're not coming back. <laughs> yeah, probably not. not. Yeah. I don't think alumni is like, I don't think that search is like that strong that they have to go back yeah. to like the past. <laughs> <laughs> what I wouldn't give, man, that would still be, that would be insane. That would be a lot of fun. That would be insane. Uh, but I'm glad that it's opening back up and I'm glad you're able to, uh, you know, get back out there and, uh, and perform. Cause I know when, when we were hanging out, I know you were going a little stir crazy and stuff with not being able to, you know, do what uh, you love. Yeah, for sure. And, and well, that's, think, yeah. And I think when you came was when like callbacks were starting again. Cause I think I got my first in-person yeah. callback when you were there. Yes. So yes, was, you like, did. Yeah, I, yeah. Remember, yeah. I think we were sitting on my couch and I was like, Oh man. I have no idea what it's going to be like to (laughs) be in a room full of people who are evaluating me after not doing that for two years. Yeah. It's been too long. Yeah. Yeah. It takes, it takes a bit to get back into the swing of things. That's for damn sure. sure. That's for damn sure. Uh, So Meg on to you. Uh, Yeah. Kind of the same thing. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Your little bit about your background and all that. Sure. Um, my name is Meg and <clears throat> let's see, I'm living in Wimberley, Texas currently, which is not too far outside of Austin. 
I work as a theater teacher in Dripping Springs, um, and I have a nonprofit theater company called Meteor Theater, and I am getting ready on February 1st to open a for-profit performing arts school in Dripping Springs, um, which is really exciting. Uh, Yeah, I I spent a lot of time like running camps to build capital, and I'm about to open up a studio, so it's like 1,200 square feet, and bringing a lot of teaching artists together and hopefully going to enrich, uh, you know, the suburbs of Austin with, with theater and and music and dance and all kinds of art because they're obsessed with football. And so I have to be the change I wish to see in the world. It would be nice. It would, it would be nice. So, so with that, are you looking for that to become your full-time job and you'll leave teaching to do that? Or is it just like at night on the weekends kind of thing? I would be absolutely crazy to not at least try to leave teaching right now. It's, Mm -hmm. It's just draining me of all of my good stuff. Um, I, I mean, I'm committed to the end of the year and we'll see what happens, but it would be really nice to have the flexibility and work for myself and get away from all the bureaucracy and red tape and micromanagement and leadership from people who have no idea what it's actually like to be in the classroom. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's been a tough time with with the pandemic for everybody, but teachers, I think, have have a unique <laughs> have a unique uh, cross to bear. And I'm tired of it. I'm like, I don't have to. Like, life is short. I could get COVID and die tomorrow. Why am I doing this to myself? Yeah. F- fuck the, yeah, do what you love and fuck the rest. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, I'm a huge musical theater nerd and I love it. And I have always loved it for as long as I can remember. And I haven't done a lot of professional work, but I've done a lot of community work and a lot of directing and a lot of educational theater. So I can certainly speak to movie musicals and I'm, I'm excited yeah, you that you guys wanted to have me on here absolutely i'm, I'm glad you're able to jump on it was, it was definitely a treat it's been too long since uh, i don't think i've seen you since uh it's probably been about 10 years i would say since elsass it's been a long time yeah. and if i had known i was actually gonna see you i would have like maybe put on some makeup or like an outfit that's not a comfy <laughs> but this is fine this is fine well, at least we're not recording the video, so well, actually, you know, yeah. just, like, what, I, this is going to be the first one we stream the videos on. So no, oh, Gary, yeah. no, yeah, yeah it's we're, fine. Don't worry about it. Well, you better it's turn okay. your camera on. Yeah, Gary. Uh, no, I no, s- no, no, oh, no, I'd love to see you, Gary. I'll, I no, mean, it's been a long time. No. I'd love to see. You, I'd love to see you naked, Gary. Come on. Oh dear God. Here we go. Is is that okay? Is that that's not weird, right? I mean, we've been roommates long enough to wear. You see me naked all the time, Johnny. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that's that's a, that's a thing. Neil, what do you think about that? Is that a is that a is that thing? Neil? Uh, y'all have been roommates too long and seen each other naked. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Just kidding, folks. We haven't. Uh, Gary and I aren't that comfortable with each other. Not yet, at least. Uh, we'll see how the night progresses. Uh, well, either way, guys, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, it's definitely a pleasure to have you. Oh, Meg, I, I I did forget. I was thinking about it the other day um, or earlier. What was the name of the conservatory you went to in Philly again? The University of the Arts in Philly. Arts. That's fucking right. Okay. I don't know why it popped into my head. I was just like, I was like, Meg's told me this multiple times. I can't believe I don't remember. Oh, too much weed in my youth, probably. Um, (laughs) Cool. So let's, let's, let's jump in. Let's jump in here. Um, I did want to start out with a question to the panel. Uh, Jukebox musicals. And for those of you that aren't familiar with the term, jukebox musicals are musicals that were made from uh, an album or just a band in general that uh, made an entire show around, you know, 30 of their songs or so. Um, Examples might be like Mama Mia or Tommy, uh, Mama Mia, Mia being off of ABBA and then Tommy being off of The Who. Um, so with jukebox musicals and we'll, we'll get into Disney and animated films in a second, but do we consider jukebox mu- musicals? Are we going to add those into the movie musical discussion tonight? I, I'm totally, I'm not for or against it. I just want to know the, uh, the group's feelings. Uh, the reason that I bring this up is a lot of times with normal musicals, all of that music for the most part is original scores. It's original lyrics and writing with this stuff. It's already been done and spread to the masses. Um, so some people, at least a lot of articles I was reading felt that it, it was kind of a, a cheap route to go, you know? Um, so I don't know. I'm going to, I want to open that up to everybody. Uh, Gary, let's start with you. What do you, what do you think? You think jukebox musicals should be included in our movie musicals for tonight in our discussion? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think that, uh, you know, they, uh, definitely incorporate music as a large part of their, uh, their stories and they, 
typically will use that music to move the stories along uh, by, you know, uh, revealing some character information or some plot points. Um, and that to me is, you know, all that's required to really uh, be a, be considered a musical. They don't all the time have dancing, but, you know, uh, that's okay. But yeah, I, I think that the, the jukebox musicals would, would be musicals to me. So it's fair to, I guess they're musicals, of course. I guess my thought process around that was this, when the musical songs, when they are written, they're typically written with the story already in mind and the lyrics are written to help format said storyline progress. And with these other ones, you know, they're, they're not, <laughs> they're just written as, as normal songs normally. Um, but anyways, uh, Kat, what about you? What's, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I definitely think jukebox musicals are musicals. Telling story through song is as old as ancient Greece, you know? And so I think if you can, <laughs> I think if you can wrap it up into a plot, like, why not? And also, like, you know, in the 40s and 50s, like, musical theater was the pop music of its generation. And, like, now, like musical theater is mimicking the pop world. And so like the more pop and musical theater integrate as they always were, as they were designed to do, we're going to see more of them. And I think that's just the future of musical theater. So I think you can't have a discussion in 2021 about musicals without bringing in jukebox musicals. Interesting. You think that's going to be the future? Okay. Yeah. That's an interesting thought. I never, I, I never, I never, I never pondered that. I think pop, pop in musical theater will. I don't, I don't necessarily think jukebox, but I mean, you mm -hmm. know, like what's on Broadway right now? Like six, Mrs. Doubtfire. The, there's going to be a Michael Jackson musical. There's a Tina Turner musical. Diana, like those are all pop shows. Mm -hmm. you know, I think we're going to see more of that in the canon. People okay. will always write the other stuff, but you know. Sure. No, it's a fair, it's a fair point. Uh, Meg, same question. Uh, I agree with everything everybody said so far. I think they are absolutely musical um, and we should be included in our discussion. I'm thinking of like across the universe and yeah. uh, I'm, I mean, one of the best musicals I saw on Broadway was beautiful. The Carol King musical. And I just thought it was so poignant and just so beautifully crafted. And mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, it, like like cool. what, Gary, what what Gary said, it's like as long as the songs are propelling the story, it doesn't really matter if they're all from the same artist. I, I love I love the integration. Thank you, Meg. <laughs> all right, all right, fair point. Uh, Neil, throw a wrench, throw a wrench in our plans here. Let's not all. Agree. All right, so what I'm gonna think? go ahead and go out on a limb here, and I'm gonna go ahead and agree with everybody. Well, so Neil, <laughs> throw a wrench I mean, in plan. To me, like There's a lot no of wrench. bands, a lot of bands, like uh, I know. Gary's brother Adam is gonna punch me in the face next time he sees me. But bands like Rush, when they put an oh. album out, when they put an album out, their album tells a story chronologically. So if someone wants to put that into a movie, you know, I'm not opposed. The same with you know Blues Brothers. You can take a whole bunch of different songs from different artists and still move the story forward. Okay, this is an interesting point. Like, is there a, I guess, a minimum amount of the movie that would need to be? Uh, songs. I mean, like, would you consider The Wizard of Oz a musical? That only has, like, maybe 10, 15 minutes of music, and it tops. Yes. Yeah. It's a musical. Yeah, I would still say musical. But it's that same okay. thing, you know, you, 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 look at, you look at a movie like La La Land, um, you know, which was not an original stage production, and then they built it from scratch, you know, and they only had, I think it was kind of, to your point, Gary, it's kind of like Wizard of Oz. There was only probably 20 minutes, maybe 25 minutes of music actually in it. Um, so I, I don't know, like I wouldn't like for, at least for La La Land, I, I personally wouldn't, I, I wouldn't consider that a music. I would consider it more of a, more of a dramedy or a romance um, with the musical portions being a secondary, but. Do you, do you remember when it won best picture, like 32 seconds? Yeah. Warren Beatty. <laughs> <laughs> Felt so bad for him, man. Uh, God, overrated movie. We'll get into that in a little bit. Um, but okay. All right. Yeah, fair enough. Um, I'm going to just, I'll, instead of going down the line, I'll just see if anybody has any problems with, uh, with Disney or uh, animated, animated movies um, getting thrown in there. I was going to leave them out for tonight just because there's already so many. But if you guys want to leave them in, I got no problem with that. Um, I was going to say the, 
I was going to ask the same thing because Disney musicals, or if you want to call them musicals, are much shorter. Or there's much less yeah. music than a real mm-hmm. musical would have. But I mean, they just put Frozen on Broadway and they added a bunch of songs. Right. So I, is that the Broadway team of Frozen saying it wasn't enough music to be a musical? I don't know. It's under definition, I guess. Sure, sure. I feel like the uh, Disney canon mm-hmm. is its own thing. Yeah, I, I would have to agree with you. I, I, I would say that it's it is it is it is separate. But uh, how do you break yeah. that up then? I mean, like, how how does the Disney musical not make musical like uh, I, I just not work, music not, in it? But but if you're saying the Wizard of Oz is a musical, there's way more music in Hercules than Wizard of Oz. Greatest I mean, Her- Her- Hercules is a punk ass <laughs> movie. Nobody likes. But, you know, oh, you love Hercules. Get the fuck out of here. Hey, hey, who put the glad in Gladiator? <laughs> Uh, Uh, Neil, what do you think? I mean, you've kind of already defined it as being a musical by saying something like La La Land, which only has a short amount of music, is considered a musical. I mean, Aladdin has very catchy tunes that people still sing today. You know, is it a catchy song that makes it a musical or is it the amount of music in there that makes it a musical? So a Broadway musical. It's yeah. almost like it was a Broadway it's musical. Lion King. <laughs> All I <of> think <laughs> they count. I think they count as musicals, but I don't necessarily think that we need to include them in tonight if we want to just focus on like straight adaptations. Okay. Man, so, well, I think Disney movie musicals are totally musicals. I mean, they follow the the plot structure like they have all the stereotypes characters and the archetypes and um they also like make bank in the box office the people love a disney musical the music is masterful most often the characters are so fantastical the budget like the spectacle of a disney musical is just out of this world i love a disney musical and Mm -hmm. i i think we don't have to like it's i get it if we're gonna be like snotty about it and be like we're not gonna include them in our discussion um (laughs) because it's its own thing but the disney musical is masterful and magic and i'm just gonna i'm gonna take that to the grave okay okay so a lot Uh, of them are written most of them are written by mankin and then once they transfer to broadway a lot of them continue you'd have music by Alan Menken. So if he's a Broadway composer writing Disney her name, I don't know. I think they could totally be musicals. Yeah. Okay. I really love how like uh, in Frozen and Lion King, just to name a few, they add, like you were saying, how they add songs. Um, I, I tend to like love the additions for Broadway. They're like so soulful and emo. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> like a Disney movie would be described, emo. <laughs> that, that's um, what I look for when I'm looking for a Disney movie. Yeah. Right? So I, I guess, Johnny, what you're saying is even though you would consider them to be musicals, and I think that's yeah. what the panel says, we should exclude them for ease of debate tonight. I would lean on that side, yeah. Okay. And we're saying just like the like the animated ones, right? Correct. Yeah. If you want to throw okay. Mary Poppins in, that's fine. You know, um, I'm whatever. Uh, what else? Uh, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, I guess. That's that's fine, too. Um, Pygmalion. Yeah. What? No. Pygmalion. No, that's what? not a musical. My that's my fair lady. lady. Yeah, same story. <laughs> <laughs> but one's a musical, Gary. One's not. One's about same a little story. baby pig, OK? No, that's bad. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Gary, why are you on this podcast? You don't even know Babe from Pygmalion. You know, I've, I've had <laughs> screwdrivers. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> that would make it more interesting. Uh, <laughs> kidding, kidding. Uh, all right. So for tonight, seems the general consensus. We're cool with with excluding the animated Disney movies for, for this evening. Uh, perfect. All right. Well, let's jump into the uh, let's let's continue uh, diving in here into the the heart of it. Uh, so. What variables or what ingredients do movie musicals require to be successful? Uh, I put a couple examples down there for you guys if people wanted, unless you came up with your own, great. If not, you're welcome to steal those. Um, But Kat, let's start with you. When you're watching a movie musical, what does it need to have to be great, to blow you away? 
I would love great voices always. Right now, sure. I think we're seeing a height of movie musicals. And so, and I think people are starting to take as Broadway performers become more relevant in pop culture, we're starting to see a lot of really strong singers be put into movie musicals. So I would love to see this trend continue. I also think a cinematographer who is interested in working with the choreographer is, is something that I love to see in a movie musical. We saw this in In the Heights, but right. I think, and it, I don't know, maybe before, like the past 10 years, there was like a lull in the dancing in, in musical movies. Seemed um, like it. It seemed like people would be like, oh, we don't really need this movie version. But then I think, you know, with the way the world is, people are like, oh, well, we do need the dancing. So I think the dancing is really important to a successful movie musical. Okay. Yeah, I, I would say that's, that's – I, I really like your point with the, the choreographer and the DP working hand in hand. I think yeah. that's, that would, that's a really – that's a, that's a really good point. Never, I never thought of that. Um, Meg, what so, about you? Same question. Oh, no, go ahead. Get, finish. I'm going to say singing actors, like who understand acting through a song and that it's different than delivering lines. Yeah. Yeah. Not just sing talking, you know, exactly. not, not, not Russell Crowe and Les Mis. Um, Gary, know how much you love that. Uh, so, so Meg, same question to you. What do you think? What does, what does a movie musical need to make it great? fantastic super challenging choreography i mean depending on the musical but i think the choreography is so important i think all the visuals um like choreo costumes like just the basic color and style visually i think it's got to be just masterfully constructed and there's got to be a lot of collaboration between all the designers so that they're on the same page um i think yeah, we've got to have some great singers. We've got to have great actors who are flexible and adaptable enough to be able to sort of uh, straddle that medium of theatrics and that heightened emotional state, but let it translate to like the subtlety of film. Um, and mm. I think you got to have a quality story with like quality arcs for the characters in order for mm. it to translate well. Yeah. So to your point then of it needing to have the great choreography, do you still feel like movies that don't have a lot of movement or movie musicals like a fan of the opera, maybe a, a last five years kind of thing where it's mostly just the singing and stage blocking, you know, do you, do you think those are as effective no. as other? No, you don't. Uh -uh. Okay. Why is that? No, I'd rather see those in the intimacy of a the theater. I, I don't know. Yeah. I get, I, it's just like when you don't have that like in-person connection and it's mostly just like feelings and song, I think it's like more intimate in a way that I don't know. I, I would just, ma I would much rather see that in theater without the barrier of, uh, you know, just change in locations and time and sure. screens. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Neil, what about you? Uh, for me, uh, I think a lot of it is uh, set design and costuming. I think, especially if it's a time period piece, make sure everything is as appropriate as possible. <clears throat> Even something like Grease, you know, you can see Grease on stage and, hey, cool, it looks like a high school. But then when you see it in the movie, you know, the whole town can come to life and it all just makes the story that much better. Right. Right. Gary, how about you? Well, me, um, and I'm going to, uh, defer to uh, uh, Kat, you and Meg on this because y'all know much more about music theory than I do. Um, but uh, it's following the music. Um, so, like, if you look at uh, Les Mis or Cats, uh, the movie productions, they don't use the click tracks or, you know, uh, the beats. They kind of tried to have the band or the orchestra play with the singer rather mm -hmm. than the other way around, uh, which is, you know, that's how I prefer to sing personally. But apparently, like, professionals and people that know what they're doing really do hate that because it doesn't come out very well at all, as we could see in those movies. Um, and, you know, like, if you look at the – in um, Les Mis, uh, the lady who played Eponine, I can't remember her name, but she was, like, a real 
like Broadway singer, and she actually was like, "I'm going to stick to the to the track." So like she sang it, uh, you know, to the music, and her scene I think came out much better. Or if you look at Cats, I don't know how many of y'all saw Cats. It was pretty <laughs> weird. I recommend you know getting very drunk or taking some sort of illicit substance before seeing it because it's really messed up. But um, <laughs> most of the singers in that uh, played with the music. Um, uh, I can't remember what it's called. Uh, Stolen Time. Anybody know mm-hmm. the Latin for that? Uh, oh, well. Uh, anyway, like like no. they, they played with the music and they didn't pay it back as they needed to. So the songs got all jangled, whereas you saw like uh, – the uh, the guy that was like the steam train cat the da 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 anyway like he stuck mm-hmm. to the like the music and like when you leave the music it 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 messes things up so uh, I I I like a musical that stays uh, uh, that has fidelity to the score. Okay. Did any of that make sense? No. Yeah, I mean, okay, you're, right, you're, 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 you're good. It, it'll make it'll make more sense when we're not as drunk as we are now. Okay, good. So we start good. to sober up a little bit. You know, day, day one, Johnny. Day one. Day one. Yeah, day one. Yep, 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 yep. Eight years down the drain for nothing. Um, <laughs> just kidding, mom. If you're listening, just kidding. Uh, Your mom's not listening. <laughs> no, not at all. Uh, no, not not anymore. At least no, not after that episode on. On something I don't know. Uh, so I don't know. For for me, my biggest thing it wasn't necessarily a. It's not necessarily a physical thing. Like it's not an aesthetics thing that you can actually see. Or it's more of along the lines of what I actually had put that down under some of the examples. Um, I put a firm commitment to like the themes and the style of the stage adaptation, the original stage performance. I've noticed that at least when I've seen it, a lot of movie musicals that don't do well typically get too far away. It's not, this is not the case for all of them, but they typically get too far away from where the stage production originally was. Um, I give an example in there with uh, Tim Burton, Sweeney Todd, which I was not, I was actually not a big fan of. Um, You guys know me post 2000. I do not like Tim Burton um, outside of big fish, but he stuck to what the original stage adaptation tried to convey with, uh, you know, it just being really, really gritty, really dark, uh, very ominous the entire time. And it's Tim Burton. So he naturally, you know, he has those tones in his movies and those themes in his movies. And he was able to, he was able to do that. So I appreciated that in his, his rendition, but um, like last five years, you know, you see the, you listen to the original soundtrack, you watch the YouTube clips of, you know, the original Broadway cast doing it. Um, Norbert Leo Butts. And I can't remember the name of the, the, the woman opposite of him. But if you look at that, that was a lot of it was a good balance of, you know, we it talked about the raw human emotion, but, you know, the goofy humor, too. And I personally felt like when they did last five years, there was too much where they tried to turn it into a drama with music. And it really just bummed me out. And I, I really didn't appreciate it. I, I really thought it was just they tried to tried something new and because there's already an original especially it's a live performance you have to you have to stay true to what got it there to its success you know um so i think you need a you need a director that understands who takes who takes the reins you need a director that understands what the original production became famous for and how it got popular and then he transitions that from the stage to film um and we have people come in trying to do their own rendition of it. It just typically doesn't work out at least with movie musicals in my opinion. Um, So I'm, I'm sure there's a few where I could, you know, I'd prove myself wrong, but um, so on to the next question here, there was a gigantic output of movie musicals back in the forties and fifties in particular. I think it was in 45, 43, excuse me. Um, Hollywood had come out with 65 movie musicals in that one year, 65. Okay. And then a decade later, they were down to under, it was like under 30 at that point. So really out of, really out of nowhere, just movie musicals, they, they stopped having their heyday. Uh, Now, obviously none of us were alive when this was happening, but we can definitely speculate on what happened because I don't really think we, to Kat's point, we definitely saw a resurgence in the last couple of years um, for sure. And I think, uh, 
well, I don't want to go into my own opinion on it yet. I'll let you guys go first. Um, Meg, when do you, why do you think these movie musicals stopped having a heyday, you know, around the, the late fifties, early sixties, and they were obviously coming out, but not as many. Um, you know, why, why, why do you, why do you think that happened? And, and when do you think they started to have their resurgence again and, and come back to relevance? Well, I think that theater is really good at sort of embodying the zeitgeist of the current times. And I think um, at the end of the 60s, we started culturally moving to a sort of gritty rawness uh, with what was happening around politically, with war, with sort of just like the cultural dynamic. It was a little bit too... mm, seedy, dark. Um, It just didn't really align with the the values of the like song and dance, like glitter and be gay sort of musical. I think it was a time for more like realness, more like grounded artistic representation of, of the times. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Kat, how about you? Yeah. I mean, rise of rock and roll, you know, like, like I, I said earlier, in the 30s and the 40s, Rodgers and Hammerstein were what was on the radio. Right. And with the British invasion, with music coming over from other countries as the world kind of expanded because of the world wars and because we could exchange pop culture, what was popular was no longer the American musical. The- it was no longer the American musical. Mm. Um, and so as it went down that rock and roll path, it's musical theater kind of stayed in, in the golden age before it started to shift um, with rent and with hair. Well, really hair. Um, and then, you know, later now we're starting to get the rock musicals and now the kids, the kids are really in, in <laughs> there with the tic tacs, you know, with their <laughs> this resurgence in musical theater. And then also, you know, people can't see theater. And so now, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah, exactly. And, you know, now we're, we're to the point where it makes sense for them to make a comeback. Cause yeah, you know, there wasn't live performances for basically two years. But it was, you know, the popular music of its time. And now it's switching that we're taking the popular music of our time and putting it into musicals and that's making it more popular. So I think that lull was because of a fight for popularity and a fight for, well, this worked 10 years ago, this worked 20 years ago. Why isn't it working now? Instead of kind of going with the times, I think there needed a reset and an adjustment. Music yeah. that was being created. Yeah. Just mm-hmm. for popularity's sake, not for enjoyment's sake or for creating art's sake, but for what was popular. Yeah. Yeah, at the time. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Gary, how about you? Yeah, I think it's got a, it's got a mix of all that. Uh, and people just, I think, you know, got tired of seeing so many musicals. I mean, it's like the zombie movies. Eventually, people are going to get tired of seeing zombie movies. Uh, we've been saying that a long time about superhero movies. and. That hasn't happened yet, but they're still maybe coming out. <laughs> yeah, phase but, five uh, on its way. Yeah, uh, but I mean, like it's uh, you know, it, it was a changing, a changing time. People no longer wanted to spend you know three and a half hours at the movie theater. They wanted to go for an hour and a half or maybe a two hour movie, and you know, get on about their day. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think it was just the changing taste, and as Meg had said, it didn't really reflect the uh, the zeitgeist of the society at the time. Yeah, yeah. Well, it it had come to the point where, especially during those few decades during the golden age, that those were the bankable genres. Nowadays, the bankable genre, it, as we can see from the stats, it's horror horror above uh, far above and beyond it's it's horror i mean nothing nothing else even comes close um just because how cheap you can make each film for you know but musicals were that was the go-to that was you know we talk about we're we're always complaining on this on this podcast we're always complaining about hollywood coming out with remakes they're rebooting franchises and they're not coming out with anything original well those movies were those are bankable they 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 were popular at one point and they've continued to be popular so why not throw more money at it and and make even more you know and back in that time yeah musicals coming out so often because everybody wanted to see them uh so neil question i'll start off with you on this one where when do you think 
musicals made their resurgence, movie musicals? Do you think there was, is it, is it an era or was it one particular movie in general that kind of, you know, spawned everything uh, coming back to relevance? I mean, I'm going to go ahead and just say early 2000s, once uh, Chicago, Moulin Rouge came out, those yeah, were for sure. very big at the time. Um, so that would probably be for me when I think they really started coming back. Yeah, I mean, because how I mean, thinking back into the 90s and 80s, sure, if we really sat here and thought about it, yeah, we could we could think of a couple musicals that came out that were maybe fairly decently popular. Um, but yeah, for the most part, I was going to say the same thing. Moulin Rouge in particular was was the one that popped into my head. Um, even though I was not a gigantic fan of it, it, it definitely made the rounds and everybody was singing it. And whenever you saw uh, like showcases, like when we were in high school, like, you know, auditioning for different universities or, you know, competing against other schools, the showcase, you would always hear Moulin Rouge was a really popular one. Um, so I don't know. Uh, Meg, what about you? When do you think the resurgence for movie musicals started again? Um, I agree with Neil. I think it started in the early 2000s. Like I remember when Chicago came out and it was a big deal and when the producers came out and how that was a big deal and it was just like exciting and it felt like there was new life in Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it was in 2003 when Chicago won best picture, that was actually the first movie musical to win best picture since Oliver won it in uh, 1968. So it had wow. been, I mean, fuck it had been 35 years, you know, uh, since we had actually had that, um, that actually had been accomplished. Uh, Gary, what about you? What, what era or what musical, uh, the movie musical do you think started the resurgence? Yeah. I mean, I think, uh, uh, I can't remember which one came out first, Chicago or Moulin Rouge, but Moulin Rouge. I, yeah, um, I, I I think um, Moulin Rouge was a good start, but I think like Chicago, because that had so much uh, really great dancing and choreography and like you got to see all of the uh, the, the kind of sets that they mimicked, like the uh, the jailhouse uh, uh, dance scene. The cell block um, tango. You know, I, yeah. Cell block tango. Thank you. Thank you so much. Great um, number. Yeah. Um, and like it, uh, you know, that's people really resonated to that because it's a lot of fun to watch and to see and to kind of get involved with. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Kat, how about you? I'd agree that uh, you know, Chicago Moulin Rouge time. Also, I mean, like, we just can't ignore what's happening right now with yeah. musical theater. Like, was that the trickle? And now it's mm -hmm. like the faucet's on. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's right now. Yeah, I, I mean, because is anybody else mind blown that they redid West Side Story? I know we talk yes. about. I, I'm so shocked. And so not shocked. Only, though, we not just only, discussed that they they just copy and paste things they've already done. Already yeah, done. But, but it's like, go ahead. Not only did they redo West Side Story, they redid it masterfully. Steven Spielberg, one of the greatest directors of all time, like took on West Side Story and they they used all of these great young actors and they somehow connect. I was beautiful. I was so I was so excited by not only the fact that they went back and decided to bring up this, you know, wonderful classic musical and that they did it so well. Did y'all see yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It 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 was good. I, I I didn't like it as much as the original. I didn't dislike it. I just I don't know. I, I'm I'm a big fan of of the first time them doing it. And just like Neil had pointed out, I I personally have a big problem with Hollywood constantly revamping different movies or different franchises and and trying to make more money. It just seems lazy. Um, not that this rendition was. It definitely wasn't. Um, but yeah, it's still good. Did anybody else get a chance? Nope. Okay, just me, and Meg. Well, give it a shot. It's uh, it, it was it was a pretty interesting watch. That's oh, Johnny, sure. you can make that your recommendation for this week. I could, I, I could, Neil, but it's it's too early, Neil. It's too early in the episode. Uh, spoiler I have alert! To, I spoiler alert, brother. I, I I gotta give. I gotta you know. I gotta build up to it. Gotta build up to it. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. You know, I I think too with. Oh God! What it wasn't tick tick boom. I know that just came out with Andrew Garfield, but Catherine, Cat, you just mentioned it. Uh, Lin Manuel Miranda. What was his other? In one? the Heights. In the Heights. Thank you. Um, yeah, you know that one came out, and that one that was probably my favorite musical it I've seen so in the last good. five years. It's so awesome. Ninety six thousand. I thought it was just like the the sequencing and the cinematography with the choreography. Mm -hmm. Like it blew my mind. Like it gave. It's the only movie musical I think I've ever seen that gave me the same feeling of seeing like a big number on stage. 
Yeah. Yeah. It, it's hard to do that too, especially with film because it's just, it, it doesn't have that same allure. You know, it doesn't right. have, everything's yeah. not as large. It's not as right. grandiose. There's one small exception though, I think in Dream Girls when uh, Jennifer Hudson sang, and I'm telling you, I'm not going, mm-hmm. I, I felt it. I felt it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I got goosebumps from that one for sure. Oh man. God. Um, so moving, moving past, moving past that, we, we definitely agree across the board that, yeah, obviously musical movie musicals have made their comeback. They're, they're not at the forefront. Uh, they may never be again, um, but who knows? Um, so there's a lot of musicals though, especially very successful and popular ones, you know, a lot of that have won multiple Tony and Grammy awards that have not been filmed and not turned into a large scale production that haven't been put on the silver screen quite yet. Uh, so if we could go ahead and pick, if everybody could go through and pick one musical that has not been turned into a movie yet and then recast the leading roles, maybe even throw a director in there, uh, who would you pick? Why? What would the musical be? Uh, Kat, let's jump to you. Uh, <laughs> what musical would you like to see up on the silver screen? Okay, so I love this question so much. I have two. One is already... We know the Wicked musical is coming. Oh, I'm so no, excited. We know Cynthia <laughs> Evero is going to bring it. If you didn't see the Wicked live in concert, she's saying, thank goodness. Mm-hmm. It's not the voice I'm looking for for that song, just because I'm so used to hearing like Glinda after Glinda sing that. Yeah. That was the best performance of it I think I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's on loop around here all the time. Um, like we got to talk about Morrible. Do they know who's playing Morrible yet? Have they cast Anessa Rose? But the one that I'm really interested in is I want to see Gentleman's Guide put into a musical. Oh, they ha- they haven't made that into a mu- uh, movie yet, have they? Have not. Sorry, into a movie. Yeah. Um, okay, but here's my God, casting. I thought they had for some reason. Okay. They haven't. Here's my casting for Gentleman's Guide. Okay, Philippa Sue would be Sibella. If you haven't, if you're like, you know what? I don't know. She's really sweet in Hamilton. You need to watch her in Dope Sick. Haven't seen that. Okay. Be a bitch and really funny. And I think Philippa Sue's got it. She's got a good soprano. The show would be hard to cast. I think you could go James Corden. I mean, I know he's like in every movie musical, but he is British and he is funny. Or like a Josh Gad. Also like Ricky Gervais might be kind of interesting because that character doesn't really need to sound amazing. Or like, let's gender bend. Let's just give it to Meryl. I mean, yeah. no, she'd be amazing. <laughs> she probably could pull it off. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise but, me. <laughs> it's a BoJack Horseman episode where Meryl retires. And they're like, you can't do it. We wrote the perfect film for you. You can play every character. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a nutty <laughs> professor, Eddie Murphy happening. kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's what I'm seeing. And then I think um, maybe you should just go to like a good, like young soprano, maybe unknown. Like, maybe, I mean, Shireen Pimpernel is not unknown. She was the uh, Maria in the most re- recent revival of West Side Story, mm-hmm. but I think she would sound really good on the music. And, like, it's kind of up and coming. So she might be a good choice. That's who I'm throwing out. Okay. Who would you like to direct it? Oh, Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. You know, I didn't think about that. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. You gave me a full cast list more than I thought. So <laughs> I thought you were going to give me like two or three. So that's great. I'll take that all day. Uh, <laughs> no, no, that's great. No, that, that's fa- that's fantastic. You really put some thought into it. I think on mine, I picked like two people, I think. So, oh, okay. I was I taking. Mean, the- yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, psych, I picked like 12 people. <laughs> so. That's cool, you know. I'll revive uh, it with Go, <laughs> <laughs> Meg. How about you? What would your uh, What would your musical choice be? Um, I want to pick two as well, if that's okay. I yeah, would, okay. So I love Fun Home, and I would want to see that on film. And I want Sarah Bareilles to play um, the older Allison. I don't know about the other ones. I mean, whoever. Uh, but I would love to see that. And then I would also like them to turn Next to Normal into a film starring Meryl Streep. And Zach Ef- Zach Efron as her son. Okay. Well, he's probably old now, but like you know, the younger version of Zach Efron. How old is he now? 
Efron? He's got to be. Or he's probably in his early 30s, right? He could play it, right? He could play a teenage boy. No, maybe not. Well, I love those musicals. I think they're they're gritty and full of heart and wisdom. And um, I would love to see them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Neil, how about you? Uh, I think uh, I would like to see a film adaptation of the Book of Mormon, uh, directed you by Seth MacFarlane. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Why? Why don't I just go before you? What's the point in letting you fucking go in front of me? You just steal my pick every time. All right, keep going. Seth MacFarlane, Book of Mormon. Who do you got starring in it? I mean, I don't know. I'm not a casting director, but I think he he would have a very good uh, shot at making that uh, a very well done adaptation. He's got uh, a lot of history okay. with musicals in both TV and film. He's done mm-hmm. a bit of directing. I just think that would be a good fit for him. Okay. Okay. Uh. I'm, you know what? Normally, I'm, I'd, I'd have a backup for it, but I'm just... Would you like I, me to go with my backup? No. No, it's okay. We can both have the same one. I'm going to say Book of Mormon to Neil, okay? <laughs> Fucker. I'm going to say Book of Mormon. Uh, I'm going to say it's going to star our good friend Daniel Radcliffe. And I'm going to tell you why I'm choosing Daniel Radcliffe. Okay? Please tell me why you are choosing Daniel Radcliffe. Because if you have seen... The crap that he has put, and it's not, I, I say crap, not that it's its bad, I'm just using that as in general. The stuff he's been putting out recently, uh, especially over the last, like, six, seven years with uh, Korn's Swiss Army Man in particular. Uh, you know, I mean, he did he did the live version of Equus on Broadway. I guess that was a, a straight play, but, you know, he did that years ago. Um, he's just, he's got really, really impeccable comedic timing that people, I don't think people really understand, because he's not in comedies very often. You know, um, he's just subtle. He's very fucking funny. And I don't know why I just I would because of Swiss Army Man in particular, I would love to see him as uh, Elder uh, Price, I think, was was leading that. Um, And I wouldn't I wouldn't remove Josh Gad. Honestly, I I would keep him in the same role that that he was originally in. Um, But to throw a complete curveball at it. I would have my director be the one and only Quentin Tarantino. I was going to say him because he is so musically inclined. His films have the best soundtracks. They do have the best soundtracks. He would soundtracks. be my backup director. Stop being in my head, Johnny. God damn it. Great minds think alike. I don't know what happened here, but, you know, good good enough. Uh, self-deprecation humor. Fantastic. Uh, I, You know, honestly, man, I... Book of Mormon, it's it's one of those few musicals that just it it has no boundaries and which which is why I love it. Um, it just it says whatever the hell it, it wants to and whatever whatever we're all thinking, but we're too scared to say it just says it. And it's hilarious because of that. Um, in fact, I remember when we went to go see it, actually, that trap. Remember that traveling show that came to Bass a couple mm-hmm. years ago? Um, yeah. Do you do you remember that older couple that walked out five minutes in? Yes, and like, <laughs> these guys are in their like seventies, and they're in the middle of the fucking row. And you guys have been—you seen Bass? It's huge. And so they get up, and it takes them like five minutes to walk out of their row. And they're like, "Oh, excuse me, excuse." Just so many people. Oh, it's hilarious. Um, but I just—I think with Tarantino, because he always goes overboard. Uh, you know, a lot of explicit language, uh, lots of blood. I, I just would like to. I think that'd be a, a funny choice. I think seeing him doing that. Uh, Gary. Uh, I uh, would like to see a movie adaptation of the music. I love you. You're perfect. Now change, uh, which is one that I saw off Broadway um, and uh, quite enjoyed it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I would like to, I'd probably cast in it for the two males, uh, Joseph Gordon Levett and Chris Pine. And for the two uh, females, Emily Blunt and Margot Robbie. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, what and, led you to uh, those decisions? Uh, I just curious. I've never seen. I've never seen them in a movie together. Um, I uh, I like Chris Pine when he did the uh, um, uh, the uh, the prince, the one of the princes. The yeah, yeah, he, prince and into the woods. Yeah, yeah, into the woods. Thank you. Um, yeah. And uh, Joseph Gordon Levitt. I think uh, it would be great to have such a serious actor. Uh, the foil to them. Um, and Emily Blunt and Margot Robbie uh, would be my two actresses. Um, I don't know if they can sing or not, but, uh, you know, I'd give it a shot. 
I mean, <laughs> sp- here's sp- a here's a six million dollar budget. Let's give it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got to lose? We'll fix it in post. It's fine. Yeah, uh, I'm just kidding. Don't ever say that to me again, Gary. Uh, even though you're Ooh. the one that always has to worry about it. Uh, so based off of, uh, actors that can't sing, uh, you know, to, to cat had cat, you had brought it up earlier. You said that one variable that you need to have is, is choosing talented singers over big named actors, uh, which a lot of times Hollywood will do with the big named actors. Cause they, you know, some people haven't heard of the musical and they want to do it still. So they bring in an A-lister who may not be the mm-hmm. best singer just to bring an audience in, you know? Um, so with this next question, I want to pose to you guys. Who do you think had the worst performance or vocal chops of an actor in any movie musical ever? There any 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 era can be any it can be a small role, can be a large role, can be a cameo, doesn't matter. Uh let's start with Gary, because I already know what Gary's gonna pick. It's obvious. So I'm gonna let Gary start to get it out of the way. Uh Gary, who do you think? Who do you think was the uh who do you think had the worst performance of a big named actor in a musical? Russell Crowe and Les Miserables. Yes, 1,000%. Everybody is going to say that. <laughs> yeah, there's like no other option. Uh, I mean, there's other options, but he is. There, the there's always options, but yeah, that, that's. I think that's far and away the number one, probably. <laughs> if, not, if not up there. Uh, it's probably number one, two, and three. So yeah, Probably. <laughs> uh, Meg, how about you? Is there is there another one you would choose outside of Russell Crowe as Javert? I couldn't think of anybody other than Russell Crowe. Okay. I mean, he's just, a- I was, he was absolutely terrible. And, and I'm, sh- you know, that's not very nice to say, but I just can't believe that happened. I just said it anyway. Yeah. I mean, yeah. He, I, I respect- he, people thought that he was going to do okay because he tried to be a, he was trying to be a musician or a rock star in the eighties. You know, he put out a lot of albums. Um, I guess they just didn't listen to them. That would have been helpful. <laughs> Probably would have uh, saved, uh, you know, some review points on the back end uh, <laughs> for the directors. Uh, I, I'm going to have to say that Gerard Butler in Phantom of the Opera was 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 probably mine. I mean, Russell Crowe definitely did a bad job, but I, I figured everybody would pick him. Um, I just absolutely love Andrew Lloyd Webber outside of Cats. Um to a T. I just he's a he's just a he's just a brilliant person. And when they did Phantom, when it came to theaters, that was actually the only musical to that point I had seen live. Um, I had you know I'd, I'd seen musicals, but that was the only one I had actually seen on stage. And so I was really excited when it came out, and I remember being a teenager and being like, "Okay, this is all right. I'm not going to watch it again, but but it's okay." But I just remember hating Gerard Butler. He just he it wasn't even that he couldn't sing all the notes; it was that his accent was so thick and I just couldn't get over it. I, I just couldn't stop. I just, I couldn't believe him to be, to be the phantom. It just, it didn't work for me at all. Um, so that, that, that would be mine for sure. Uh, Kat, how about you? Who falls into that for you? Uh, I don't know. I think performing's too hard to do that. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, because of voice, sure. Like I, I You know, as a voice specialist, like it takes so long to change things in your voice. And like, if you're not, if you're not already coming to it from this world, like it's just too difficult. And like, I mean, you know, I'm sure I've done stuff that I'm bad in that I'm glad people didn't see. And, (laughs) you know, I don't know. I think it's too hard. I think there's too many factors. There's too much. If you didn't get the right resources early on, I don't know. You know, everyone's just trying to do their best and make this sweet, wholesome, three billion dollar (laughs) movie. Kat, this is a cat. This is a critical show. We're here to bash people who try to live their dreams. Okay, can you get on board? Thanks, Amen, Gary. Uh, (laughs) Let me put just just to just to reiterate with with Gerard Butler. From what I was reading, this motherfucker had. Four vocal lessons before he auditioned for Andrew Lloyd Webber directly, by the way. No experience in music behind this at all. The only reason he got cast is because Joel Schumacher loved him as Dracula in Dracula 2000 so much, he thought he could pull the acting portion off. I mean, I guess little did he know it was a fucking operetta. Like, I I don't know. It, it still it pisses me off talking about it. Uh, Neil, to you before I smash something. Uh, to me... Uh 
Bes- well, the second worst performance that I can think of would be Antonio Banderas in Evita. Mm. I absolutely hated it. I loved the musical mm-hmm. and I liked the movie. I loved Madonna and hated Antonio Banderas. Uh, <laughs> I felt like he talked his way through most of the lines, even though I understand Che talked most of the lines, but I just didn't think it was a, a good fit. No, absolutely Still not. Still look mean, the part at St. Peter's, caught the eye. That's from Evita. Oh, <laughs> oh is that what I was from, Gary? Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, so cool, yeah, cool, cool, yeah. cool, cool, Gary, I think uh, if I was to recast Evita, I uh-huh. would cast you as Evita. I mean, Thank obviously. You. I mean, obviously. You're welcome. Don't yeah. cry for me, Argentina. That's great. I, I'd rather... I mean, we're still going to keep I, Jonathan Price in there. Yeah, Jonathan absolutely. Price, but. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, now, Meg, as the only person here who's played Evita before, does that insult you, <laughs> Gary's rendition? Oh, no, I thought it was beautiful. Okay. Thank All you. right. Thank you, Meg. Lies. I appreciate that. Lies I and appreciate slander. That. I, I love the two of you as guests. You're both very polite, and, and you don't make Gary feel bad about himself. I guess that's <laughs> my job, so... Um, so that's that's that, that's good. That's good. No, uh, uh, yeah. I, I there's a lot. There's a lot of big names. I, I would I would throw Johnny Depp as Sweeney Todd back out there too, just from the vocal wise. Um, th- th- there's a lot you could throw in there. We hope that you are enjoying this rousing episode of Let Feather Productions. I don't give a flick. To help us bring you more of the content that you love, please consider following us on Patreon at patreon.com slash leadfeather. There are three tiers to choose from, with special and exclusive merchandise in our VIP level. We now return you to your regularly scheduled programming. Anywho, we are down to everybody's favorite segment of every most episodes that we have we are jumping into mount rushmore plus one uh for those of you if this is your first time listening uh and for for cat and meg since they haven't done this before basically what we do is we go ahead and each person on the panel gives their own top five of best or favorite movie musicals of all time if somebody takes one of your picks though you have to find you have to use one of your backups Uh, Once we've all done our five picks, then we collectively try to come up with a top five list, or as we've coined it, a Mount Rushmore plus one. Uh, So sometimes those go quickly because we all agree on what the top five are. Sometimes like our sitcom episode that lasted for like an hour. Um, We've been going for a while already tonight, so that's not going to happen. But it is possible. It it can be very, very frustrating. Uh, especially the more people you have. So let's jump right into it. Um, You don't need to give your top five list in any order. It doesn't need to go one to five or five to one. It can just just be random. That's fine. Uh, So I will let our guests start us off and then we'll kind of mix up the order. Uh, But Meg, why don't we start with you? What would be on your top five for greatest movie musicals ever? Okay, um, (laughs) this was kind of a hard question, but I decided to go with just like my personal experience, which is uh, Mary Martin's Peter Pan is a classic. And uh, it was the first movie musical that I ever saw. And it it did something to me that was good. And I so that's going to go on my list. Um, The Sound of Music. Oh, oh, let's just go one at a time. I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't specify at the beginning. No, it's okay. It's fine. It's fine. Um, okay. So we'll, so, so Peter Pan is is up there for sure. Awesome. Okay. So I will add that onto the list. Uh, Kat, how about you? Just give us one. I was going to say sound of music. Just thrown out. Can I take it? You I very, mean, that you aerial very, shot yes, you can. You can. You very, do. you very much, you very much can. I apologize. I didn't that explain. That aerial the shot <laughs> at the beginning I mean, I am a grown adult and that will make me weep for the whole (laughs) beginning of that movie. I would just be on my couch totally fine, just like a Tuesday afternoon, fully in tears just by the opening. And then when they say, yeah, okay. (laughs) <laughs> you, you you're, you're you're more than yeah you're more than welcome to give us a rundown of your thoughts on it that's that, that's perfectly fine so this, uh, this, yeah the song where they're like i must have done something good didn't mm-hmm. they add that to the film i think they did oh did they okay i didn't know so, that yeah like it's so good oh, okay i'm a mess right now just thinking about it <laughs> Come on, please. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a minute to compose myself, please. It's amazing. <laughs> it is. 
<laughs> I'm a lot of Kleenex. Uh, Neil, how about you? What what jumps onto your top five? Uh, for me, straight off the bat, one of the top ones for me is going to be the Wizard of Oz. Interesting. Okay. All right, Wizard of Oz. How about Return to Oz? Nope. No. No, oh. Neil. Neil, not a fan. Okay, Gary, I wasn't asking you. I was asking Neil. I'm not familiar with that. Okay. Well, it's quite Neil, good. Neil, you're not a fan. Okay. Uh, <laughs> according to Gary, I'm a huge fan. Throw it up on the Mount Rushmore right now. Perfect. Yeah. Up, uh, Rushmore plus one. <laughs> Gary, how about you? Um, uh, Fiddler on the Roof. Ooh. Okay. All right. Now, Gary, would you say that is the greatest of all time? The greatest movie musical adaptation. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh huh. That's tough. I think Fiddler on the Roof really nails what Fiddler is, and I really like it a lot. Um, and I, you know, who doesn't love a story about matchmakers? Um, that's right. That's right. But uh, I, I don't know if I could say it was the greatest of all time, but it's probably uh, one of my top two favorites. Okay. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, for me, I'm going to throw Chicago up there. Um, Chicago was for me. I mean, th- their their rendition of Soul Block Tango. I, I God, I can't, I can't even put it into words how much it, I was. Even, I was watching it just I was just watching that one clip today on YouTube, just kind of prepping for the episode. And I watched it like four times. I, I don't it just. I don't know if it's I don't know if it's the song directly or it's the choreography that they that they they drew, you know, an influence from Bob Fosse from or it's Catherine Zeta Jones just leading. The, I mean, I guess it was multiple women. It just it, it, just that song by itself. Uh, it just always it always blows me away, man. Um, I don't I didn't my one my one qualm with the movie was I was not a giant fan of Richard Gere. Plain. I thought he acted well. His voice is so so. Um, but I had heard at one point that they had offered the role to John Travolta, and I know Travolta. All in all, he, he's. I don't know. He and Gear are probably pretty equal, but I would say to play a sleazy lawyer, Richard Gear definitely has the look for it. He definitely has the suave, debonair style of acting. But Travolta is just. I mean, between Saturday Night Fever, Hairspray. Uh, Greece, you know, I mean, the guy already had a track record with it and you're already going to, you know, you've already got a, a, a packed house with Catherine Zay, Jones, Renee Zellweger and John C. Riley. Um, I just felt like had they added him, it would have taken them to another level. I don't know. Very well may have destroyed it for all I fucking know, but that's probably the best art direction and production design that I've seen in a movie musical myself. Just the sets that they were able to build during the musical numbers, not just cell block tango. Um, but for, especially the, the song where Renee Zilger's character is, I don't remember the, um, the, but up, but but reach for the gun. I don't remember the name of that one, but that, that set was also fantastic. Also blew me away, but Chicago's going to be mine. Um, let's switch up the order a little bit. Uh, Neil, why don't you start us off with your number two? Uh, number two for me is probably going to be arguably one of the best of all times, and it's Singing in the Rain. Oh, you son of a bitch. Okay. Stop going to me, Johnny. Stop uh, going sh- to me. I, I sh- okay, you're right. It's my fault. I, I just shouldn't go to you. I should just ignore you and pretend you're not a part of the episode. Now, do, uh, do you like it better in the original movie or in Clockwork Orange? <laughs> no, Gary, <laughs> we're not We're not getting into this again. Oh, okay, okay, you asked about Return to Oz, Johnny, so you're stupid well, shit. Hey, hey, motherfucker, we're, we're not going hey, into this hey. again, and we're not talking about Die Hard as a Christmas movie, okay? Um, we'll, we'll get into it's, all it's of these a, later. It's absolutely a Christmas movie. It's not a fucking Christmas movie. It's a movie that happened to be based on Christmas. You have said multiple times it's a Christmas no. movie. No, I haven't. You, I okay. you took you took you took the you're the editor, Gary. You took the footage from uh-huh. multiple episodes and you you fabricated something I never oh. said. You said <laughs> so, that. I can hold up in court. <laughs> <laughs> Gary's the engineer. I don't know what to tell you. He's the audio engineer. He can make it happen. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, Meg, how about you? What would be number two for you? Um. Well. Again, this is just like personal preference, but I absolutely yeah. love Gypsy starring Bette Midler. Ooh. Okay. It's so good. Mm. It's just, I mean, I don't really know what to tell you. It's just, it, it, it captures the story so well. The act, mm. it's, it's beautifully cast. Everything, 
it, it, they just did it all right. Yeah, 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 they did. How, so let me ask you, so when I had seen Gypsy, I was probably in my early 20s, so I, I was able to understand the plot a little bit better because I was actually an adult. How old were you when you first saw it? <laughs> I was probably like 11. Okay, <laughs> all right. All yeah, right. I really connected with the kids mm-hmm. in the show. I liked okay. watching them grow up. Um, and then I liked the idea of like growing up into like the naughty burlesque house, like, Ooh, like <laughs> coming into your power, like you can be a bad girl and that's okay. <laughs> like I loved it. Perfect. Uh, Kat, how about you? And we got to play in the Heights up there. Mm. Yeah, baby. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Lynn Manuel. Absolutely dude. beautiful. Also Lima Mel Miranda's cameos in that are amazing. <laughs> or he's just, cause oh, I mean, he's just, I know, but like, I feel like talk about coming into your power. Like, I feel like he really realized like who he was in this film. Yes, just, <laughs> I, just felt, well, I don't know. I love it. I scold Bilagua. I mean, I just, oh God, I, he, yeah, he, he was, he was fantastic in it. Um, even if he was dancing, only in it for I mean, get out of here on the side of the building. It's, it's mm-hmm. very good. That was fucking cool. Yeah. Uh, Gary, how about you? What, what pops in for number two? Um, for number two, uh, I had uh, Evita, which was a 1994 movie. Okay. Okay. Now, is that was was that any good? Did you like that at all? Not bad. Uh, it's yes, okay. it's okay. I, I mean, it's I, one I, of his I, top five. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. there you have it. You, it. It would have been better with you as Evita, though. Uh, and him as Che. And you know, him as I, everyone. I, you know, I recently did a complete mock up of uh, Les Mis where I sang all the parts, so I could do that for Evita too if you're you requesting. Please it. do. I am requesting uh, that now. Excellent. For, for those of you that want for the one time fee of nineteen ninety five, uh, you can have a personalized what was what did you sing, Gary, one day more? You sang like one ten parts in it? Yeah. Gary, you, yeah, you got really bored one day, and just what what program did you use for? Did you use our Adobe Premiere, or what? What did you use to record it? Yeah, Adobe Premiere and Audition. <laughs> yeah. Well, you nailed that audition. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you, Neil. that's that is one thing to happen. Uh, <laughs> uh, for me, uh, I'm gonna have to throw uh, Cabaret in there. Oh yeah, uh, that's that's actually. I mean, that's. Uh, I would honestly say that. Liza Mane- the casting of Liza Minnelli in that might be, in my opinion, might be the m- most perfect casted role in any movie musical ever, honestly. Um, because she, to my knowledge, she did not do the original Broadway um, performance of it. And I don't know the whole story behind her casting of it, but it just it's just so it's just so mesmerizing, man. Uh, I remember it was that same thing. I saw it when I was younger. I saw it when I was 14, 15, didn't fully understand it and then saw it years later in my 20s uh, and then fully appreciated it. Um, so I'd, I'd have to throw that in there for sure. Uh, so let's keep the let's keep the train moving here. Uh, Neil, bat, we'll, just, we'll switch around and go to you. Um, what, what's your third on there? I am guarantee you I'm probably not going to steal this one from you. Uh, this is just a personal preference, but I really enjoy the Rocky Horror Picture Show. I love Barry Boswick. And obviously Tim Curry and Susan Sarandon, I think, did an excellent job in that film. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah, you would not have stolen that one from me, but that that was I'm aware. Of, that would, would be one of one of mine on the outside looking in. Actually, I hadn't seen that ever, and then I remember that you, me, um, I think it was Allison Houston, and I don't know who else. It was just a random group of people, but we went to go see it and I had never seen it before. And we actually accidentally went to Alamo draft houses, uh, quote along. Along, or their yeah. sing along. Yeah. And so we couldn't hear any of the songs. And so we left halfway through. And then I remember that we, we were, we were drinking on the way back to your house. And I think we started the movie at your place and I fell asleep within like five minutes. Uh, yep. so I had to watch it. Uh, I had to watch it years later, but definitely, definitely worth it. A very, a very good pick. Uh, cat, how about you? What would be number three? I think nine might be number three. Okay. Or saw and nine. Okay. It's just because of the story of Mar Yestin composing it. Like okay. he, when he was composing it, he was like, well, the story of this man is all of his women. And, mm-hmm. and then he was like, well, how do you get around the fact that you have an all treble score? Mm-hmm. It was too expensive for the Broadway show to in a male ensemble to do backup and didn't make sense. <laughs> and so then they were able to like reimagine the score when it 
was put into a film. Um, right. So I, I loved what they did with it. Now, I, I can't remember. I remember Daniel Day-Lewis was part of that cast. Is that correct? Mm, I think so. Nine. Okay. Okay. Um, Because I I, I remember seeing, there was also an animated, there was an animated feature called Nine that came out around the same time. Uh, And that one, I think that was, that one was about like a bunch of dolls that had been made by a mad scientist and they came to life or something. That's obviously not the same thing. That is not the same thing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. (laughs) Yeah. Um, But when I, when I had heard about it, everyone's like, oh, Daniel Day Lewis is in it and he does pretty great for a musical. And I was like, what? I saw that. That wasn't a fucking musical. And then I realized Fergie was in it too. And Fergie mm-hmm. was kind of great in it. Ooh, okay. I always yeah. love her. Uh, yeah. Meg, how about, how about you? Number three. Um, I think for number three, I'm going to say Grease. Because okay. classic. it's a classic. It's great. John Travolta, Olivia Newton-John. Fantastic. Ooh, uh, uh, Stalker Channing is an amazing mm-hmm. Rizzo. Um, I think it's just just such great music and so much fun to watch. And I saw that very early. And now, of course, I look at it through a more feminist lens. And I think there's some problems there. But uh, mm-hmm. when I was young, I just absolutely loved it. Nice. Uh, Gary. Uh, the Brave Little Toaster. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, Gary. What's your three? The Brave Little Toaster. I thought we agreed that we weren't doing animated uh, animated musicals. You, you said Disney. Oh, for God fucking uh, fine. You know what, Gary? Okay, I will put Brave Little Toaster on the list. <laughs> Thank you. Brave Little Thank Toaster. I appreciate yeah. that. You know, looking at that through the lens of an adult, that's actually a really dark and depressing movie. Yes, yes it's about it's suicide, morbid. Johnny. Yeah, exactly. That's why it connects with me so well. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Gary. <laughs> Get the hell out of here. <laughs> fucking nihilist motherfucker. Um... <laughs> Oh God! Okay, so for me, God, this nobody asked you, Johnny. A tough one. Well, that's the cool thing about being me, Neil, is I can ask me and I'll answer myself. So you know, don't let that get confusing. Uh, I would, I would honestly have to say, I really, really enjoyed. Uh, <laughs> I really, really enjoyed Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. Uh, I, I don't know if, if you guys have, have seen that or even heard of it. Um, it's not quite as popular as, as some of the other ones, but it came Black out. And dur- white. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, it got a Technicolor uh, reboot a couple years after no, its it initial did. release. Yeah, it did. Um, after the initial release. But it, it it was around that time where it was in the 40s, 50s. It was, it was during the heyday of the golden age of uh, Hollywood movie musicals. And I, I just absolutely it was one of the only musicals my dad would actually watch. So we used to do family movie nights on Fridays and we'd, we'd order Pizza Hut. And that was like our thing. And we would always watch some some new movie. And uh, my mom went ahead and picked that out from Blockbuster. And she, she was telling my dad, oh, it's a it's a musical, but it's also a Western, basically. Uh, and so. Yeah, sure enough, we we popped it in, and there's a crap ton of dancing and colorful characters and lots of catchy tunes, uh, stuff my dad doesn't normally appreciate, but he enjoyed it a lot. Uh, not as much as Paint Your Wagon, but we'll talk, about, paint a wagon. <laughs> we'll talk about overrated musicals in another episode uh, and how Clint Eastwood should, should not sing uh, ever, but that's okay. Uh, so moving on, Gary, let's go to your number four. What do you think? Um, my number four would be Moulin Rouge. Ugh. Ugh. Okay. Interesting pick. Ugh. Thank you. That's almost as good as the little toaster. The Brave little toaster is an excellent oh, yeah. movie that teaches you how to accept the futility of life and to give into it. <laughs> Meg, don't let any of your students listen to this episode just for, because just Gary is just, funny. we're all food for worms. And that's what, <laughs> that's what it's about. Um, never. I, I back think the again. kids need to know, honestly. Yeah, like, life is terrible, kids. It's only going to get worse <laughs> as you get older. Yeah, kill, yeah. You, kill yourselves now. Thank no, you. Gary, no. <laughs> oh God, Gary, you are the worst. Fuck. It's uh, crazy how the number of listeners we have keeps dropping off. <laughs> <laughs> That's not um, true, Neil. Don't say things like that. Uh, just kidding. Cat, what's your number four? 
I mean, we've got to throw West Side Story up on the board, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, Absolutely. we do. But is it the original it. or the remake? Oh, man. I don't know. Good question. Well, which one did you like better? Or I guess, oh, you you didn't see, did you say, you? I can't remember. Did you see the new one? I haven't seen the new one. So. Okay. Okay. So the original for now. The original we'll for now. You know what? Okay. Someone challenged me. Put the revival on the board. Boom. Gary, <laughs> throw it up there. <laughs> Gary, it sounds like something you would do without even seeing it. Movie mu- musicals or revivals. <laughs> we'll leave the original up there for now. Uh, Meg, what would be your fourth? My fourth would be Hairspray with Ooh, Zac Efron. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's real good. It I just love the music. Good. I wish that I mm-hmm. could produce that in my Central Texas school, but I cannot. And it is such a shame. Yeah. Oh, God. I, I just I couldn't imagine them allow, allowing you to be able to do that. And it, it was, it, I mean, talk about a talk about a musical that really hit the nail on the head and talked about the tough issues of the time that it was in, you know, talking about mm-hmm. segregation and, you know, really staying, staying true to yourself. And, you know, I mean, they, 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 there's a, there's a lot of things, you know, talking about aesthetics don't matter. And yeah, there's just a lot of, a lot of well-made points in, in that's just the script by itself. Um, God, man. Yeah. Good pick. Uh, so looks like Neil, you are up next. All right, my number four is going to be uh, a little off-Broadway musical called Little Shop of Horrors. Ooh, oh, so with good. Rick, with Rick Moranis. Rick Moranis. So good. I didn't mm. think of that one, but that one's amazing. I love that movie. That's a good pick, Neil. Damn it, Neil. That's what bitch. I do. I make good picks. <laughs> uh, for my fourth pick, I'm going to go ahead and throw Rent up there. Um, I was when I trash when I, movie, <laughs> not, not even. Okay. First off, Chris Columbus was surprisingly a really good director to pick, to actually go in and, and bring this to life. Uh, what was really cool. You don't see it very often anymore. The rent had brought back six of the original Broadway cast members. Uh, you know, I mean, Adina Menzel and uh, Anna Pascal and Anthony Rapp, those guys all came back. But really the only I mean, I guess they added um, Rosario Dawson as Mimi was really the only giant recast that they had. Um, and it just so happened that the majority of the leads in that movie <laughs> and in the music, the original musical were also very big and or decently big in Hollywood and TV during that time. So, uh, it, you know, it, it warranted. Um, paramount bringing them back so that's gonna be my pick uh let's start rounding out our top fives uh gary i'm gonna let you go ahead and and, uh, round out your top five hopefully you have a better pick than the brave little toaster but we'll see (laughs) gary i'm just kidding brave little toaster is a good pick uh, I, th- I think it's called Mammy, Mammy, uh, Mammy? the one that's like, yeah, that has uh, <laughs> we need a little Christmas, right? Ma- Mammy. I don't think you can, think you can <laughs> call it your top five if you don't know the Mammy. name. <laughs> you know, I just, uh, yeah. Mammy? Okay. <laughs> Mammy, okay. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I can't believe I've actually, I've actually, I've never heard of that. Okay. All right, Maine. Okay. <laughs> really then, got me. <laughs> uh, so Meg, why don't you round out your top five? Sure. Hopefully it wasn't Mammy. <laughs> oh, that was so funny. Um, my final pick is Dream Girls because oh. of Jennifer Hudson and Beyonce, oh. and I love the music, and I thought they did a really good job of adapting it to film. And I just think it's a really great show. When did that okay. one come out? Uh, Dream Girls, 2006, 2007? Sounds I good. I don't remember yeah. that one. Really? Yeah, is it Jamie Foxx, Eddie Murphy got, actually, Eddie Murphy, I think he got nominated for his first Oscar um, for Best Supporting Actor. Uh, it didn't win, unfortunately. But, but yeah, no, that, yeah, it was, it was a really good cast. Yeah, I, and it's, it's funny, you know, Jennifer Hudson just kind of disappeared. 
uh, like well, after that happened, uh, right? Well, her, I mean, I, her life took a tragic turn. I don't, I don't know the details, oh. but there was like some violent crime or something within her family. Like some close relatives oh, wow. got murdered. Yeah, she she went through quite the quite the I don't know downward spiral after that film. Uh-huh. So I don't know, okay. but she came, huh. but I think she, she came back. She, she came back and she lost all this weight. Yeah, she did. Yeah, she looks great. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Is um, she a voice in Sing? Yes. Isn't she the elephant? I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure. I don't right? know. I thought I thought I thought she was. Or the um She's in it though, isn't she? Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure she's the elephant. Maybe. Uh I wanna, uh, yeah. I wanna look that up real quick if yeah, but her, a... her voice is just of not of this world. It's so beautiful. Oh, you know what? It says here that. Okay, it says here that she was the like the the goat or the the sheep, the sheep uh, that was really rich, and she yes. owned the theater. Yeah, she was donating money to the theater. Okay, that's interesting. I don't know why they wouldn't have had her play one of the main characters. Then that actually that has solos and whatnot. Yeah. That's weird because this character doesn't sing. Oh, strange. Uh, Kat, how about you? What rounds out your top five? And it's hard. I got two Rodgers and Hammersteins in my head. Oklahoma okay. and then uh, the original Cinderella. Okay. All right. You're putting Julie Andrews on the map, filming it in one night, writing mm-hmm. it for TV. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'm in love with the story. But uh, mm-hmm. and some of the music in that is just like some of their best writing. What, what um which, which one would you pick though if you had to, you had a gun to your head which one would you pick? You know what? I'm gonna pick Oklahoma because my goal of tonight is getting my top five on that board. I, I you know what? I don't know. <laughs> I think more people have seen Oklahoma, so okay. I'm here to Fair win, enough. John. That's right. I I know. Hey hey, you know you're you're in it to win it. You know that's uh, us slide lines. We gotta we're, we're all, always super competitive. Um, <laughs> uh, Neil, how about you? What's your what's your fifth one? Uh, it's a tough one, but I think I'm going to go with Mary Poppins. Okay. Fair mm. enough. Very good pick. Always solid. That one you did not steal from me, Neil. Hey, so I appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Um, cool. Random, random fact for you. Um, they didn't bring, so Julie Andrews, big breakout obviously we saw was was mary poppins and she you know won an oscar for it that was the same year that my fair lady came out and they had gone with audrey hepburn to play eliza doolittle um even though julie andrews had done the original west end broadway production of it uh they didn't think that she was since she wasn't a big enough star and you know breakfast at tiffany's had made audrey hepburn explode uh they decided to go with her instead of andrews so i wonder what would have happened had they casted Julie Andrews as Liza Doolittle and then uh, and and then who would have played Mary Poppins? You know, would we have had that same would it have been that same iconic type of film? So I mean, I'm that. sure she doesn't mind. She won an Oscar. <laughs> well, true, true. She yeah. that's very true. Audrey Hepburn couldn't even be qualified for the Oscars because someone else had to sing for her. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Somebody. Yeah. She she got dubbed over. I forgot about that. Yeah, she did. Yeah. Because I, yeah, I, I didn't, uh, I guess I didn't know much about her backstory, but I don't ever remember reading anything about her having any like musical music training of any kind. I think it's um, part of um, Show Me. The lower notes mm-hmm. in Show Me are dubbed over. Uh, so for mine, to round out my top five, it was a tough one, as it always is. Oh, there's just, there's just so many good ones. Um, I I honestly I don't actually I don't know much about the background on this. I don't know if it was a musical beforehand or not, but The Greatest Showman uh has it just ever since it came out I've I still listen to that soundtrack to this day. I'll still throw it up on Spotify and uh if I'm in a musical mood and I'll I'll take a I'll take a listen. I don't know much about its background. I don't know if it was originally you know, part of that or not. Um, and there's also, you know, there's, there's still, there's the King and I, there's the music man, there's funny girl. Uh, hell there's my fair lady. If you're a fan of that, you know, uh, I just, for me personally, greatest showman is one that I can consistently right. listen to. You didn't to. put a star is born up, Johnny. You love that. Yeah. I, see, that's the thing, Gary is I, I don't know if I would consider a star is born a musical. 
it's not even a jukebox musical really because they're singing the songs they don't just randomly burst out into song and that's what i feel makes the musical they're singing all their songs when they're they're rehearsing or they're actually on stage in a live performance you know um that's a good point i mean it, it, you could definitely make the argument for it potentially being a musical if it's interesting that you bring that up now you got me thinking now you got me <laughs> Like no, I think, you're, myself, I think you're thinking but... correctly because like I love the Blues Brothers, but I don't think it's a musical. They just happen to be singing songs during the movie. Right, 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 right. OK, OK. Fair enough. Fair enough. OK, so we all have our own individual Mount Rushmore plus one. Now, the entertaining and potentially very tricky and difficult part of the evening begins. We have to collectively agree on a top five. All five of us have to collectively agree on a top five. So basically what will happen is we will go round robin style. Everybody will select one. We will we will we'll throw out one recommendation and it can be from your list or somebody else's list if you want to uh, or one that we didn't mention. OK, and everybody has to agree with it. If one person says nay, then we discard that one and we have to go back into the into the pile. So just uh, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll share this on the discord text in a second but meg's top five was peter pan gypsy grease hairspray and dream girls cats was sound of music in the heights nine west side story oklahoma neils was the wizard of oz singing in the rain rocky horror picture show little shop of horrors mary poppins gary's was fiddler on the roof avita brave little toaster moulin rouge and mammy uh or maybe excuse me. Yeah, it was. <laughs> uh mine was Chicago, Cabaret, Seven Brides or Seven Brothers, Rent, and the Greatest Showman. Okay. So we'll start once again uh with our guests. And uh Kat will let you go first. You may pick any musical from this list or anywhere of one that you would potentially put on a Mount Rushmore plus one of the greatest movie musicals of all time. Uh, it can be personal preference or what you just in general think is one of the best. Uh, it is up to you, and then we will debate. So what would you throw up there? What will be your first one? I'm throwing Sound of Music up. Woohoo! Okay. I am personally not going to argue anything on that because that, I just think, is hands down when you think of quintessential movie musicals you think of not only julie andrews but you think of santa music so you got you got a yay from me uh what does the rest of the panel say meg yay gary uh yeah any musical about nazis is yay yeah for sure <laughs> yeah oh yeah absolutely yeah you know we want to talk about crystal knocked all the time uh neil i mean it was one of my top five so i'm gonna go ahead and say yay okay all right, fair enough. All right, there we have it. Sound of Music number is Number one on the board, Neil's number, pick. Number pick, number one. All right, uh, Meg, how about you? What would you like to throw up there? I would like to throw up Cabaret. Ooh, okay. Mm. Well, that that was on on my top five, so I'm, I'm not going to argue with you on that. I, I would agree. Uh, Neil. I'm going to say yay. It, it's, okay. Uh, it's a classic. It's very good, very well done. Fair enough. Uh, Kat. Okay, perfect. Gary, how about you? Uh, I was inclined to say nay, but I was thinking about it, and uh, I was recalling how Meg had earlier said that in the late 60s, uh, musicals had had trouble because the, uh, uh, the zeitgeist the, of people had kind of changed. And I think Cabaret perfectly fit into that that new era in uh, in uh, the late 60s and the 70s uh, about just not, you know, a lot of negative stuff. So I will say yay on that myself. Yeah. I was going to say, Gary, to help sway you, Cabaret holds the record for most Oscar wins without winning Best Picture because it lost to The Godfather. Godfather, yeah. That's right. Okay. Neil, it is so funny that you just said that because I was about to say that. Oh, beat you to it. We're, we're reading the same articles. Ah. <laughs> All right. Perfect, though. Sound of Music and Cabaret, both solid picks. Uh, I'm going to go next. I would like to throw Chicago up there. Uh, Chicago, as we've already, of course, talked about it. But uh, one best picture. It was the uh, first, like I said earlier, first musical in 35 years to uh, win best picture since Oliver Twist from 1968. So that is mine. Uh, Gary, to you, yay or nay? 
Uh, you know, I really do like Chicago. It's got all the stuff that I think a musical should have. Dancing, singing, uh, good numbers, so. high energy. Uh, so I'm okay with that. Okay, okay. Uh, Neil? Um, Uh-oh, there's trouble in paradise. No. I'm going to say yay. It it was part of the whole resurgence back into the into the musicals and the movies. Uh, it was very well done. It was exciting. It was electric. Yeah. Uh, yay. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. 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 Definitely. It's okay. on my top five too. Okay, Meg. It's all up to you. What do you say? Yay or nay? Ugh, I want to say nay because like we already oh. have a candor and ebb up there, but I agree with what you're saying. Like it was so good. It was so modern and fresh. It like really revived the movie musical. It's great choreography and I love the cast. So I'll just kind of go with you guys and say yay. <laughs> all right. Sounds good. All right. Three for three, three for three. Uh, all right, uh, Meg, since you had a little trouble saying yay on, on the last one, I'll let you go next. Uh, what do you want to throw up there? Um, ooh, I think that I want to throw up Grease. <laughs> okay, Cat, uh, your Throw thoughts. up Grease. All right, I'm going to put, I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to nay this. I'm sorry. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'm going to have to jump in there with you. I'm going to have to nay that one, too. Grease <sighs> is not the word, have you heard? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, I, I think, I, I don't know, man. Maybe maybe my only thing with it was it, I, we just, we had to watch it so much when we were in grade school. And it wasn't just, it wasn't just high school. It was even, like even junior high and stuff like that was, that and Sound of Music were the two musicals that that we would just that we would always watch in choir or in theater or something like that. I just I don't know. But you voted for Sound of Music. And I, love, I, I, I love Sound of Music. I just well, think so, Grease is cheesy. Well, kind of Grease is cheesy. Is that? That's just me. Okay, well, if you want, Mark, I think Grease is cheesy. I, I always thought it. I always thought it was overrated. Um, Finally, just, the truth. Thank uh, yeah. you. I think if you take John Travolta out of that movie, nobody would have watched it. That's fair. Maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe. I mean, it's no brave little toaster, but I mean, you know, obviously, <laughs> I think uh, I think there's a lot of people out there who really love Greece and oh, were yeah. brought to the musical via Greece. One hundred. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, I would totally agree. Uh, I mean, when when people talk about when they're like, oh, yeah, like if you talk to somebody who doesn't know a lot about musicals or doesn't watch them very frequently, they're like, oh, what's your favorite? I bet you I guarantee you, you know, six, seven times out of ten, they're probably going to say Grease because it's the only one they can think of, you know, just because it's so popular. You know, it's so iconic. Um, God, yeah, there's 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 a lot of catchy songs in it. It's uh, yeah, but but OK. All right. So, uh, Neil, what would you like to throw up there? Uh, I think it has a shot of making it. Let's throw up Little Shop of Horrors. Okay, okay. Uh, Gary, thoughts? I am 100% down for that. That's uh, fun, Ooh. catchy. Uh, uh, Rick Moranis, uh, uh, Zero Mostel. Hello, Seymour. Uh, the, everybody does a great job. The I Am Your Dentist song is, you know, it, it sticks in your head. And I think, you know, you know, it's important to have a song that sticks in your head and you can't get rid of it and just mm -hmm. burrows into your brain until you want to drill it out. So, yeah. <laughs> you are morbid as hell tonight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, Meg, where, where are you at with Little Shop of Horrors? Yeah, 100% Little Shop of Horrors. I'm a big fan. Okay. Okay. Uh, Kat. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. I was gonna say nay. I really, I feel like there's three or four others that I could throw on top of it. Um, but if everybody's gonna go that route, I feel like we need to give some credit to the comedic movie musicals, and we don't currently have that on the list. And uh, I, I obviously love Rick Moranis and uh, Steve Martin in that. Actually, you know, really cool though. The guys that did what was the name of the plant again? Anybody remember? Audrey 2. Audrey 2. Okay. Audrey 2 actually was designed by the same guys that designed uh, the Alien Queen in the Alien franchise. Uh, so, a little piece of history for <laughs> you. Yeah. Um, so, we will we will throw that up there. Little Shop of Horrors. Welcome to Mount Rushmore plus one. Okay. So, Gary. now you're saying that two of my top five are, are up there. Is that correct? Oh, god damn it. Neil. Oh, yeah, oh. you're right. You're right. 
Uh, Gary, <laughs> Gary, can you bring us home? Can you bring us no, home, Gary? I, I don't think I can get everyone on board with the brave little toaster, <laughs> even though you really or are. Mammy. <laughs> or Mammy. Yeah, um, but I will throw up the fiddler on the roof. Uh, it's a uh, <sighs> classic tale of uh, a bunch of uh, like Jews that live in uh, uh, Tsarist <laughs> Russia, and they have a matchmaker and uh, trying to get their children together. It's, just, it's a tale about like their community trying to survive amidst uh, the, the chaos of the outside country, um, and like you know, it's just a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful movie and great music. Okay, all right, fair enough. I agree with you, man. I agree with you that it's it's got great music. Cat, what do you think? Fiddler on the roof. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, okay. It's one of my favorites. I'm gonna suggest yeah. it for this if if no one else did. So. Hmm. The one I was okay. like, man, I hope it's on that. I'll rush more. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Meg. Absolutely, I love Fiddler on the Roof. I think it's one of the greatest musicals of all time. Let's throw it up. It is a good one. Neil. Is this four or five? Five. This this rounds it out. I think you and I are in the same boat. Mm. I can hear the I can hear the, the trepidation in your voice. Cause there's so many other strong ones. There are. There's there's also Harris I mean, there's also singing in the rain. There's also there's Oklahoma. Yeah, there's also I mean, Oklahoma. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm gonna say yeah. I think it won like six or seven Oscars. I think it got it best did. picture. Uh, yeah, put it on the roof. Number five, throw it up there. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm gonna be the I'm gonna be the dick. And I'm gonna say nay. Um, I do love Fiddler on the Roof. It's a fantastic, right. fantastic Johnny, musical. Johnny took that took that bullet. Got it. Yeah, F- fantastic musical. I I think there's I think there's two to four other musicals up here that were better movie adaptations. I think there there were two or four that were str- that were stronger, and they're still my favorite of all time, which is still up here, which is which is the the next one I was gonna suggest. So. Not opposed to it, Gary. Not opposed to it. Um, but I, I think there's a couple that we could throw out really quick and 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 chat about. Um, I would like to throw up "Singing in the Rain" as 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 my recommendation. That has been my favorite movie musical since I was a young kid. Didn't and we already has, say that? No, not yet. We haven't. We haven't. Thrown that was number yet. one. <laughs> No, first one was Sound of Music. Oh, Sound of Music. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've got Sound of Music, Cabaret, Chicago, and Little Shop of Horrors right now as, as our uh, uh, four or five. But we still got one more to fill out. I'm I'm going to throw out Singing in the Rain. Um, you want to talk about the prototypical musical trio? I mean, God, dude. I mean, you throw Gene Kelly, Donald O'Connor, and uh, Debbie Reynolds all all in one fucking film, and it's just, you know gut bursting laughter and amazing choreography, amazing dancing skills, you know, great voices outside of the one song where it talks about where it's Gene Kelly and he's like arriving in, you know, New York or LA, wherever, and he's trying to find an agent uh, that, that, that like 20 minute dance number, I just thought was absolutely ridiculous and not called for at all. Just, they didn't need it. Um, that was the only weak part of that movie. I thought, um, but I don't know. That's 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 mine. So I, I throw it up. So Gary, since I said nay on yours, I'll let you start us out with this one. Uh, what do you think of Singing in the Rain? I was going to go yes, since it's a classic one. But then you reminded me about that twenty minute dance portion, yeah. and I just I just don't like it. So I'm a nay. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, there's no I, there's yeah, no sense I've in destroyed going down your line. dreams, Johnny. <laughs> I'm never going to fucking what? forgive you. Yeah. You know what I'm going to suggest next is is Maine. So you know, okay. take that. And I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to take credit for it, man. Uh, OK, so there's no sense in debating that because uh, Gary already said nay. We just need one of those. So, Kat, I'm going to let you I'm going to ask you to throw up another one. Have we not thrown in the heights back on the board. We have not yet. OK, I'm throwing it up. OK, OK. All right. In the heights. Yeah. Yeah. Um, has has just curious. Has, has everybody here seen it? I know it's not quite as popular as the other ones. Um, I have not. But did just re- you have not? No. Have okay. Not. Right. Well, Gary, you haven't either. All right. Well, damn. <laughs> so it's it's going to be known for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Move, move, moving on. Moving on. Um, Neil, what would be one that you'd throw up there? 
I think a very strong contender is the Wizard of Oz. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go say nay on that one early. I I uh, un, unlike the majority, I I don't really consider it to be a musical. Um, I mean, it has you can certainly make an argument for it. Um, I just I see it more as a classic piece of cinema that is a rite of passage. If you you know just to just to watch all well, the classics, um, so I'm, I would have to say nay on that one. Just there don't think go. there's enough music in it. Um, Meg, what would be another one that you would like to throw up? I would like to throw up hairspray. Nice, good pick. Solid, solid. Uh, has everybody seen hairspray? Pretty sure, but I just want to recall. Gary and Neil, it's more to you. Yeah. You have? Yeah. Okay. All right. Great, great, great. Uh, Kat, what do you think? Yeah, your name on Hairspray. Honey, don't make me go first. <laughs> all right, we'll skip. We'll skip you. That's all right. We'll skip you. Uh, Gary, your name. Where's the Nay. chat with all the with the list of everything? <laughs> Let me throw up what we got left here. I think uh, I think Hairspray is good, but I think like uh, Gypsy would have my vote before Hairspray. Really? Yeah. Okay. Why is that? Set of curiosity. Uh, I think Gypsy's uh, uh, really well written. I love the music in it. I mean, like uh, he's uh, a bad another fan, written. so yeah. <laughs> I like you know. Um, so you know, I, I I just I think I think it's a better musical than Hairspray. Just I enjoy it okay. more. All right. Okay. All right. He got the nay on there. Okay. Well, we cannot continue going for that. Uh, oh, okay. Well, I just saw what time it was, so let's do this. Since I was the only one that said nay to Fiddler on the Roof, I will say yay and change my vote. Okay, I do. <laughs> do you like Fiddler on the Roof? Activist, got it. <laughs> <laughs> I like Fiddler on the Roof. I very, very much. I, I, I think there are a couple that it's up there in that top ten for me for sure. Uh, and definitely, a, I thought it was a, a better musical than a, a movie musical, but just my own opinion. Uh, so we're going to go our Mount Rushmore plus one tonight. We're going to go The Sound of Music, Cabaret, Chicago, Little Shop of Horrors, and Fiddler on the Roof as the greatest movie musicals to currently have ever been created. Uh, so guys, unfortunately, we are winding down for the evening. Uh, it is getting kind of late out here on the third coast and I'm sure on the East coast for you, New Yorkers, uh, really quick before we go, we do like to play a little game, uh, where we let our panel make one movie recommendation for our listeners for the week. And, uh, typically we like to keep it along the same lines as the topic for that week's episode. Uh, but it is up to you. Uh, so to give Kat and Meg a second to think about something to recommend, uh, we're going to go ahead and let the hosts start out this evening. Uh, Neil, I'm going to let you start out on this one. I don't think you're going to steal mine this week. So go on ahead. What are you going to recommend for our listeners to view this week? Uh, just going to throw it out there. There's going to be a little bit of a curveball. You weren't expecting it, but I'm going to say 1999's Annie. Uh, because I think it was very well done, and I love Kathy Bates. What? Really? Yeah. I was not expecting Annie at all. I was. I. I. I don't know what I was thinking, but I wasn't thinking fucking Annie. Jeez, Neil. Yeah, you. That. Okay. That one did surprise the hell out of me. Well done, Neil. Well done, uh, Neil. Did you like the 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 newest version with Cameron Diaz and Jamie Fox? I haven't seen it. It was awful. Don't watch it. I. Uh, I'll go ahead and go. Uh, my recommendation for this week is going to be along the lines of <laughs> uh, one that is what you might consider to be a, a jukebox musical, uh, Rocket Man, which was with uh, Taron Egerton. Uh, it was the basically the, the musical autobiography of Elton John's life. Sir Elton and John. Sir Elton John um, was actually a, a really phenomenal film. I was not I was expecting to like it, but I did not expect to like it as much as I did. Uh, really thought that they did a very good job of not only going in depth behind the scenes on what Elton John had gone through as a kid and then, you know, being a gay man in an in industry that still at the time didn't fully accept it, um, you know, staying in the closet for such a long time and not coming out till he had you know gotten a little older and his relationship with his parents never fully. It was just... It was it was a bit of a tearjerker at the end, you know. I mean, the music was was beautiful. Taron Egerton's got a surprisingly very rich voice, but the story itself, I really thought the script was a lot better than other movie musicals I had seen, especially jukebox ones. So yeah, for me, Rocket Man is going to be this week. Um, Gary, are you back? Do you want to go ahead and give yours? Or are you still? 
Yes, uh, I'm okay. going to recommend uh, Man of La Mancha, which is based on oh. Don Quixote mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. by Miguel de Cervantes. It's a story about a man um, uh, uh, having lived many years and grown uh, wealthy and retired. He kind of starts to lose his mind. Um, and then uh, he decides to lay down the melancholy burden of sadness and conceives the strangest project ever imagined. Mm-hmm. <laughs> to become a knight errant and sally forth and roam the world in search of adventure, to right all wrongs, to raise up the weak and those in need. No longer would he be playing Alonso Quejane, but a dauntless knight known as Don Quixote de la Mancha. I just had that off the top of my head, but yeah. Oh wow! Okay, damn. Yeah. that's 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 quite quite a something, Gary. Oh, <laughs> uh, always always enjoy Gary's synopsis of the movie he recommends. Always always entertaining. Uh, Meg, how about you? What are you going to recommend for us this week? I loved that synopsis of Man of La Mancha. I always think of Linda Etter when I think about Man of La Mancha because she covered a song from it in this Broadway concert and she hit this like super high note for so long. It was like amazing. Uh, I digress. I want to be like watching Canto, which is the new like Disney musical, but I don't know. We've kind of like said, don't talk about those. So, so you can, you can I, suggest it if you want. It was really good, but I think my real suggestion will be Dear Evan Hansen. Um, I thought that the oh. I thought the film adaptation was really strong. Um, it was kind of awful to go through that emotional journey so close up to the characters. It was a very different experience than seeing it on in the theater. Um, it was oh, ugh, it was a lot of catharsis, but I thought it was really well done. Yeah, per- I, I still need to see. Where is that streaming on right now? Do you know? Do you know? I don't know. I saw it in okay. the theaters. Okay. Okay. I'll have to check that out because I have been, I've been listening to the soundtrack off and on for the last two years. And I was like, Oh, so the motion picture came out. need to see it. Uh, Kat, how about you? What's your recommendation? Um, tick boom. Oh no, yeah. Okay. It's not Jonathan my, Larson. it's not my favorite musical, but as a mm-hmm. movie, they gave it this documentary style and knowing the story of Jonathan Larson for and after the film, I, I think makes it, a better musical than Mm -hmm. it is on its own. So if you haven't seen crazy ex-girlfriends, you know, it's a binge world. (laughs) It's the ex-girlfriend singular. Oh yeah. Oh, perfect. Uh, guys, well, we, we can't, uh, Meg and Kat, we really can't thank you both enough for coming on this week, uh, and hanging out with us. It was a lot of fun. Uh, those those episodes. Yeah. The, the episodes that last, over an hour and a half. Those those are the ones that we really love doing because the the conversation was so stimulating, and you have those those random tangents everybody goes off on, and it's just it's just a blast. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we'll definitely have to do it again sometime in the future. Uh, but for all of us here at I don't give a flick. I'm Johnny. I'm Gary, and I'm Neil. And we'll see you guys next week. Stay classy. Thank you for tuning in to Lead Feather Productions podcast of I Don't Give a Flick. Make sure to subscribe to our podcast so that you never miss an episode. Podcasts are available on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, YouTube, and everywhere podcasts are hosted. I Don't Give a Flick is hosted and produced by Johnny Blackburn, Gary Elmore, and Neil Riley. Executive producer, Johnny Blackburn. Technical director, editor, and audio mixer, Gary Elmore. I Don't Give a Flick is a Lead Feather production. Copyright Lead Feather Productions 2021.